action. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. It's a demo kind of town, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. Definitely. Well, <laughs> definitely. It's a, I'm with, here with Kay James, a solutions engineer at Ambassador Labs. Yes. We're back here. We met originally in Amsterdam. Now we're going at it again with a little demo of a Docker integration with Ambassador Labs. Is that yes. right? The Docker, Docker Compose. Docker Compose yes. integrations that yeah. we're looking at. And you're going to show us what? Uh, I'm going to show us the Docker Compose uh, telepresence integration as well as our integration with JetBrains uh, IDEs. Okay, great. So we're going to go through, just so everyone knows out there, we're, we're going to look at some key features of the platform. We're going to do a live demo. We're going to get some benefits of the platform and a call to action wrap up. So let's get started. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at telepresence. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, telepresence is a developer tool that allows you to run some code locally and test against a remote Kubernetes cluster. So you can run your code locally, have your dependencies in the cluster, um, and then telepresence helps facilitate the communication between the two, establishing a hybrid environment. Um, so the key features of the platform are the ability to connect and create intercepts. Uh, with a telepresence connection, uh, it's like putting your laptop in the cluster. So you're able to curl or ping to any service.namespace and get a response from that service in the cluster. Um, then with the connection, you're able, I mean with the intercept, sorry, you're able to intercept traffic that would have gone to a service in the cluster and send it to the code you have running locally, the local version of that. I see. Yeah, and then uh, it does this with a header value. So any traffic that has that header is going to ah. go to my local machine. And then the traffic that doesn't have the header is going to interact with the service in the cluster. So you want to like divert traffic that doesn't have that header value. Yeah, essentially. Um, and what's really exciting now is uh, we have a couple integrations that make it even easier to adopt telepresence. So we have uh, intercept specifications, which are essentially a YAML file um, that packages all the telepresence commands into one. And within that, we have uh, integration with Docker Compose, where if you're already using Docker Compose, you can put your Compose specification in an intercept specification and uh, run that all in one single command. Uh, and we also have the JetBrains uh, plugin, where if you're using IDEs like IntelliJ, you can run telepresence within uh, the IDE um, using GUI magic. Okay, so what we're seeing here right now is what exactly? So we're looking at our Emoji Vote application. So this is deployed in our Kubernetes cluster right now. And on the right-hand side, I have uh, my intercept specification. Uh, with the Docker Compose integrated here. So essentially what the specification allows you to do is specify the context that we're connecting to. Uh, so here's my cluster. The workload we want to create an intercept with, with so this is our front end service from the emoji application. Um, some environment variables, and then down here we have the compose part of things. So uh, we have our Docker compose specification here, and we're able to specify which services are running locally or we want to run locally, and which ones will be from the cluster. So in this case, we have the voting service and the web service that we're running locally, and then the emoji and vote bot uh, will come from the cluster. And if I just run it, so you'll see here it's running this telepresence intercept run um, and then the YAML file. Um, what it's going to do is create that connection uh, to the cluster. It's going to create the intercept. And it's also going to spin up our local containers as well. There we go. So if we look, we got our cluster we connected to, we have our intercept it created, um, and then we also have the containers that it ran to. So if we click this URL here, we'll be able to see our local containers and interacting with the remote services in the cluster. This pop-up just tells us that we're looking at our preview URL from Telepresence. Yeah, so we have a different color front end. If we vote on some emojis, it'll take us to the leaderboard and we could see that or we'll be able to see in a second when it loads. There we go. The right. voting is a little different than in our cluster here when I wow. voted. 
it's getting a response from those services. So it looks different because I'm running that container locally instead of interacting with the one in the cluster. That, that suits the developer in what ways? In a couple ways. Um, if you're already using Docker Compose, then you can easily translate that existing configuration into telepresence, um, be able to utilize your hot reloads from your Docker container, um, and also run all of this in one command. So instead of needing to spin up the containers, do the telepresence connection, uh, create the intercept, that's like, could be four to five different commands. This did it all in one. That's a time savings then. Yeah, it's definitely a time saving thing. Um, so in addition to this, with Docker Compose, we have the uh, JetBrains uh, plugin as well. A bit simpler, I'll just run the web service, the front end service locally. And then in uh, our IDE here, I have this plugin on the left hand side that says Telepresence. If we click it, uh, we can select the cluster that we want to connect to. So we're already connected to um, my Telepresence cluster here. Select the namespace, and then we could select the service as well. So I'm going to stop this existing intercept and create a new one. Click Create an Intercept. Specify the port that our local service is running on and click Create. And in a second, it'll give us another preview URL to interact with the remote cluster and our local container or local service that's running. Um, so you can see our telepresence header, our preview URL, and we can take a look at it here. Oh, I think maybe our local service is not quite running just yet. But essentially, if you are um, working in IntelliJ a lot already, then it's in the UI to start using telepresence and you can easily create intercepts in that way. So the idea of meeting a developer where they're at, whatever you're already using, telepresence can come in um, easily and, and with that workflow that already exists. So it helps them keep it in their workflow. Yeah. Right. So tell me about telepresence overall. What do you see trending right now in the telepresence world and how does this fit into that? Uh, well, we're working on um, some more integrations and different IDEs. So we have this JetBrains one. Um, I think somewhere down the line, we want to expand into other ones as well. Um, and again, the idea of meeting developers where they're at, um, I think it'd be really cool to hear what, how people are developing now and um, ways that we can help integrate telepresence with that and make that process easier. So what looking you, for things like what that. What are you hearing about what developers are working on now and why do they increasingly need the telepresence? The need for telepresence comes in when, um, say, you have to start making decisions or like saving time and money when it comes to developing in Kubernetes. Because wow. there's, um, you know, some people run everything locally that gets cumbersome on your laptop. Some people will deploy it to the cluster or a cluster, and that can take a lot of time, needing to containerize and build and wait for YAML and CI/CD processes. So telepresence comes in and allows you to very quickly do your testing locally. Um, and, and kind of bypass the need to deploy or um, the need to have multiple namespaces or clusters for each developer. So for example, the Docker Compose integration, we've had people who use Docker Compose a lot and then they want to integrate telepresence with that because they want to just run a few containers and not all these different containers or try to make decisions about which containers to run and then which dependencies they're going to be able to meet or not. Um, so telepresence in that way um, makes that process a bit easier, right? So. so in that context, what is the what is the role of intercept? Intercepts allow you to replace that container in the cluster with what you're running locally. So say you only want to work on one specific service um, and then you have all these dependent services, right? So when you're coding locally, on that one service, you're going to have to make decisions about what it can interact with and whatnot. With the intercepts, it's like putting that code that you're working on locally in the cluster like you're deploying it without actually doing any of the work of deploying it. Um, and uh, it's able to work, w interact with all its dependent services and databases and whatnot. And then you can test your, your code and your changes like in real time. Um, and not like kind of asynchronously like deploying it and waiting um, for like integration tests or that type of thing. It becomes a real matter of efficiency, doesn't it? Yeah. Just making the developer's life a little bit easier. Anything else that we'd like to look at? Um, 
that's all we were going to look at. Okay. Um, definitely want to let everyone know to try out Telepresence, uh, check out our quick start, give us some feedback on, you know, if you like it or not and what you'd like to see us do with it. Thanks so much, Kay. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.